Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill Letson. I'm a retired fireman as a fire captain here on the central coast of California. Uh, and in 1994, when I was on duty, I had a, um, a near death experience. Uh, I got ill from uh, a really uh, ill patient and it led to a near death experience where I left my body. So to get right into it, uh, this was 1994. I was working at station 11 in Santa Barbara and I was on a paramedic engine uh, and we were running calls. There was um, a flu epidemic going on. A lot of people were sick. There are a lot of people in the uh, emergency rooms and we, we ran this uh, on this one lady and she had been cooped up in a room and the windows were all shut and she was super ill. And myself and the paramedic um, just kind of jumped into action. And I climbed across her to get a mask on her, uh, O2 mask, because she was in, you know, she was circling the drain, as we say, um, very, very, very ill. And, you know, we went to work on her. And as I climbed across her, and I was setting up this mask, she exhaled just this deep exhalation. And I was inhaling at the same time. And I felt her breath go right into mine. It was pretty bad. I mean, within a couple of days, I was really ill. And I just got inoculated with that bug uh, fully. And I got really, really sick. And I was, you know, throwing up and it was going the other way. And I got really dehydrated. Um, to where I didn't have a lot of fluid left in my system. And it was it was really obvious on the afternoon of the early morning of the next, of the third day. Uh, it was really obvious I was running out of fluids. And I couldn't, you know, I didn't really look like myself in the mirror and my heart was just racing like 150 beats per minute. And my, um, I couldn't get a, um, pulse on my radial down by my wrist. I couldn't get a radial pulse. And that's an indicator that your pressure is below 80. Uh, so I called my um, my sister, I, uh, my niece picked up, she's five years old. And you know, was, my voice was just a whisper. Uh, I couldn't even get a, you know, a sentence out. And uh, I heard my niece just yelling, Uncle Billy, Uncle Billy, you know, something's wrong with Uncle Billy. And they hung up and dialed 911 and you know, my department, Santa Barbara County Fire came. Bunch of wonderful guys picked me up. They started some IVs, took good care of me, uh, got me in an ambulance, uh, code three to a hospital uh, in the central uh, Central Coast area. And I came into a hospital that was full of people and they all had the same thing. They all had the same symptoms. And so they put me in uh, intensive care. The last thing I saw, I was 3.30 in the afternoon or something, and I went out cold. And I was unconscious through all this other stuff. And then late at night, one or two in the morning, um, I left my body. And I found myself, like I was, I was talking to my wife in the room one minute, and then the next minute, there was a lot of blackness. And then the next minute, I was flying through this, just this, sky full of stars that's all i could call them for years was these colored stars and they were all around and it was like a wel welcoming they were just these joyous things this energy was flowing through me i was just exhilarated i was euphoric and anything that was a problem here you know, any kind of low vibration, uh, things like jealousy or anxiety, those things were gone. They did not exist. Uh, they belonged to that person I was pretending to be. Um, this guy you're talking to here, this Bill Letson. And I felt like I'd been let out of a hot, stuffy, dark closet. And I was this huge, expanded cloud or balloon or something. And I was flying through this star-filled realm. And it was a it was a coming home. It was a welcoming. It was a it was amazing. It was it was wonderful. I didn't know a person could feel that good. It was like this cosmic orgasm. It was this complete and utter joy and exuberance. 
Uh, and that was just the way you rolled. It was that, that was your vibration that you were loved and you were stoked. And it's, oh, wow, this is so cool. This is so cool. So anyway, I'm flying along. And the biggest thing that was going through my mind was how in the world did I forget who I really was? How was it possible that I believed I was this dude who had this whole story? He had this you know, this history and his goals in life and what defined him and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, the people that he enjoyed, the, the group he rolled with and the people that, you know, didn't like him. None of that stuff was real. It was a complete illusion. And like, it's like a game or a trick that we play on ourselves when we come into this physical realm when we come into earth and you know take on this body this separate this single this ego that uh you know says me 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 and this is my schedule and this is my, what i believe in and this you know th these are my positions and i will defend them um we take on this character and um you know there's a lot of challenges that go with uh, these characters, all of us, as um, we assume to be. So anyway, I was flying along and I was just really, I mean, there was all kinds of information. It was just rolling through um, stuff that you, there wasn't any questions. It's like, oh my goodness, if I could go back and explain this whole, you know, energy thing to people. And I had complete awareness of uh, recall and um, you name the subject. And I'm like, this is awesome. I'm flying along with these stars. I feel incredible. I could do this forever. And then I landed somewhere. I landed in a place that was solid. It had indirect lighting. There were tables there and there were uh, there was equipment there and there were um, beds and, and things like that. It was like a, a clinical place, almost like a, an institution, a facility or something and there were beings there and right in front of me were these three little hooded guys and were overjoyed to see me uh they had um they had these dark uh squatty little bodies and they were in these dark robes with a hood and they were all smiling and giggling and uh asking me things and bouncing around they were good natured they were sweethearts they had big smiles and they had big bright eyes and they loved me uh they knew me and they loved me forever and they were asking me questions like how was it what can you tell us what did you learn and one of them sort of stepped forward and took a look long look at me and then he turned to the other two and he goes he doesn't remember us and they all started giggling and i was i still you know i had still had my good nature and stuff and i'm like well dude, I kind of remember you guys, but uh, I'm kind of having a little trouble here. This is a very strange place here. And they giggled some more. And then there was this tall guy and he was kind of in charge. And he was like, he was wispy. He looked like a, like a Gumby that's been, you know, at the gym, just trimmed up and like a cactus. And he had a big smile on his face, bright eyes, super bright eyes. And he was tall and wispy. And I remember when he walked towards me, he kind of separated, pieces of him separated, the top moved first and then the rest caught up. Uh, it was like I was looking at somebody underwater or um, like they were made out of vapor or mist or gel or something. I, so anyway, but he, he was he was super cool. And when he did come close to me, my chest just expanded and my throat just tightened and i felt like i was going to break down into uncontrollable crying from love there was so much love coming from this being that it was overwhelming it was paralyzing he was the sweetest guy uh, we went back and forth with different things and uh all i remember was he was everything i said he was chuckling and 
you could tell that he just loved me and he kept he would kept laughing and you know i kept trying to you know as uh you know firefighter they're kind of type a's and they kind of you know step in and take care of things or or, or try to take over sometimes when it's things are unusual and um so i was kind of piping up now and again and he would just chuckle at that and i got the sense it was like you know like a like a young father would and he had a toddler and a toddler's walking around the house for the first time and he's getting into things and he's knocking the plant over and he's wrestling with a pillow and 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 the father was just you know just in love with his kid and he's a little uh, he's a little kid walking around thinking he's running things and that's what the sense i got was this was um you know this is how much this love was like a a father looking down at a child and so it, it wasn't very organized there wasn't it it wasn't much going on and at one point i said well i'm not going back to that place meaning here this body uh no way that's ever in the plan and um so are we going to, you know, what's next? A, a review of my life? Would you guys like to start? And and the big wispy guy, he just cracked up. And he had this sweetest laugh. And he just said, sure, let's do that. How do you want to start? And I thought this was, uh, this was strange. I, I shouldn't be, like, organizing things. But, you know, I, I wasn't there for... It wasn't the end of my life and I wasn't there to stay. And I'm the only one who didn't know it. Um, and so I talked for a while. I told a bunch of stories, and I, you know, a bunch of things that I was thankful for. And, um, you know, that that's not how a review of life usually goes. You, you're it, There's much more profound things uh, of how you've impacted others and things like that. I've learned since, you know, uh, explain that to them and, and then along the way, he just goes, all right, that's enough. Uh, time to go back. And I was like, dude, go back? Are you kidding me? And uh, I said, I, and I, I am not going back there. Um, because, you know, th this is a powerful illusion where we are. And we can really get lost in the madness. And it, it really is, it, it really is an illusion. And we come from a place that's amazing. And you know it instantly when you get there. And I was not going back. And he told me, no, you're going back. And that's kind of what I knew. I was going back because um, they had complete uh, power uh, in the situation. There is no fighting them. But... Uh, from what I understand, most people try. And I tried some more, and I said, I could look, uh, boss, um, the only people that are going to really miss me is my wife and my parents. But they will get over it. They are strong people. And he thought that was pretty funny. And I went on with something else like, you know, I'm almost 40. I think I was 38 at the time. I'm almost 40 years old, you know, it was, my life's pretty much over. And uh, he thought that was funny too. And he said, no, you have things to do. You have important things to do and you're going back. And he came close to me and the closer he got, uh, the more I knew that that had ultimate control over the dimension and my place in it. And I noticed it started to break up it was starting to dematerialize um, and I felt myself descending. It was a, a drop in frequency, um, a vibration, and I was on my way somewhere else. I was leaving that channel. I was leaving that frequency and I dropped away into darkness and the last thing I remember was I was somewhere near my body and it was a scary place. Um, I, I brought this back and all, a lot of near-death experiencers are calling me in and say, you know, this is exactly what I felt, but I, 
I couldn't put it in words. And it was, it was a place like it was lonely. It was dark and it was low vibration. Nothing like where I just was. And we don't want to be there. And it's it, this place it, right next to where we are in the physical. Um, this was my impression. Um, and so I was back in my body. And some hours later, I woke up and I had all this equipment. I was in intensive care, had all this equipment on me, you know, tubes and stuff. And there was a automatic um, blood pressure machine. And I could read that and it was reading like 40 over zero. And I would fall back, you know, to sleep. And then I'd look again and it was, it would be like 48 over zero. And, I, I, you know, and it was going off every, I don't know what had a cycle of every 10 or 15 minutes, but I kept waking up and seeing it and it was slowly climbing back. And it was in the sixties and around 68 over zero. I said, well, I'm coming, I'm coming back. It looks like I'm going to, make it. I got up, you know, um, 70s over zero or something like that. And I was, I could stay awake most of the time. And a nurse walked by and she looked at me and she was like startled. She goes, my goodness, you're awake. And I said, yes, I am. I have to talk to you. And, and she goes, I, I have to tell, go tell the doctor. We've been worried. We didn't know what was going on with you or, you know, what was going to happen. And I said, okay, you can go tell the doctor. But first, what am I doing back here? I was home. I was out of here and I was with my best friends. How did I get back here? I was convinced that I had bought the farm. And without missing a beat, she said, honey, you've been in escrow, but you fell out of escrow and now you're back with us and you're going to have to get your head around it. And, uh, that was good advice. Um, you know, and, the, and the, the yogis and the spiritual teachers, they'll tell you, you know, after you have an experience like that, um, get back up and chop wood and carry water, which means get back in your life and do the daily things that you are here to do that keep your life going and get ready for your next challenge or wherever your life is scripted to go. All of us uh, have been sent here. We are these divine beings. We are these amazing, expanded uh, divine beings that have this capacity for immense love. Uh, that is all that matters in the universe is uh, love and kindness and patience and compassion. All I have is um, admiration for everybody because we're all on these missions and, um, you know, your life may be full of woes, but it's just an illusion. It's just a ride. It's like a, you know, it's like we, we signed up for the spook house ride and um, just to see if we can get through it. How, how much can we learn from it? I knew about everything in this life, uh, but I also knew that it was kind of a joke. It was kind of a trick or a game that we play and we go back to our real home where everything's fine and everyone's there waiting for us. Yeah. Your families, your pets, they're all, they're all there. Nobody ever died.